Um, hello and welcome to this presentation uh, for the uh, where I'm going to essentially be describing the uh, infrared particle filter algorithm that uh, the Temple University NASA Lunabotics team is using on their uh, 2014 uh, robot. So my name is Mark Halberstadt and I'll kind of be walking you through this description. So uh, for the Lunabotics project, we have to produce an autonomous uh, robot. And the way that we chose to go about uh, making our autonomous system was by breaking the autonomous system down into four different subsystems, including location, obstacle detection, navigation, and actuator control. If we do this, we are able to make kind of a very simple, high-level autonomous system and kind of abstract away a lot of the complexity out of the highest level, uh, so long as we build a very robust uh, subsystems. Uh, and specifically what I'm going to be talking about in this presentation is our location system and how we are using the Nintendo Wii Motes um, in order to locate, uh, locate a beacon in the arena. So the Nintendo Wii Mote uh, is what we are using for our location system. Uh, it uses I squared C communication and it has a uh, 1024 by 768 uh, resolution. And pretty much what this reports, and there's a little video that I'll start playing here, what this reports is the uh, XY position um, and also the uh, size, which uh, generally uh, is some type of measure of intensity, of the four brightest infrared points of light uh, that, the in, that the infrared camera can see. So pretty much at the front of this Nintendo Wiimote, so this is the Nintendo Wiimote down here, there is this infrared camera, and what you are looking at on this display is the output of this infrared camera. The infrared camera has a 1024 by 768 screen uh, that is refreshed approximately about 100 times per second, uh, and it gives you the X and Y coordinate as well as a size reading of the four brightest points of infrared light that, uh, that the camera... Uh, that the camera is able to see. And one thing uh, to note about this is that this is just uh, DC infrared light. This infrared light is not being modulated at all. It's just either there or, or it's not. So in some situations, uh, we were exploring, like kind of right at the beginning of the project, um, using uh, the, uh, the Shea IR sensors, which are only sensitive to uh, 44 kilohertz infrared light, or light that's being modulated at, uh, 44 um, kilohertz. Um, if you do that to the Wii mode, that 44 kilohertz signal just looks like a DC signal. So you can kind of tell in this uh, in this demonstration, the uh, the signal is actually being modulated slightly. It's being blinked on and off. Um, so uh, uh, really, what we have to do if we want to get rid of uh, DC interference, which is exactly what we want to do with our particle filter. Um, we've got to create the, the, the scheme for getting rid of that DC interference ourselves. There's no uh, filtering uh, built into the Wii mode. Uh, so anyway, this is the basic Wii mode system. And what we have decided to do for our project is basically we are going to create an infrared beacon pole. Uh, so this is the actual beacon pole that we are going to use. This has approximately 300 uh, infrared LEDs at a 940 nanometer wavelength. And then we have got two uh, Wiimote uh, camera units. And what these are, these are actually uh, uh, Wiimote camera units uh, that are put onto PCBs that we purchased from uh, Rocket Brand Studios and then 3D printed enclosures for. So uh, we've got Wiimotes, um, the Wiimote cameras inside of uh, these two uh, green 3D printed units, and then those are actually attached on top of servo motors so they can actually swivel around. Essentially, what each of these units does is they report the angle at which they see this beacon. Uh, so then, really, if we have two of these units reporting the angle at which they see a beacon and we know the distance by which these two units are separated, this, we can turn this into a law of signs problem and then triangulate our position in the arena. So that's kind of a high level of how the, um, how the location system works. What we are using the particle filter to do, however, is we have to be able to tell 
the signal from this beacon. So we have to be able to, to figure out what signal, what infrared uh, signal are we getting that is the beacon signal versus what is extraneous background noise. Uh, last year at the 2013 Lunabiotics competition, we actually had a uh, pretty big uh, problem with sunlight interference. So uh, really uh, the focus of the 2014 system was to figure out a way that the system would be very robust and still function well in the presence of sunlight interference. So that is kind of the motivation behind creating the particle filter. So the basic algorithm for the particle filter is this. We take that uh, 1024 by 768 uh, screen, uh, that, that output from, uh, from the Wiimote camera, and we randomly distribute 100 particles in the viewable area of the remote. So a particle is just essentially an imaginary point that I am going to put somewhere in that uh, 1024 by 768 grid. And each particle is going to have an X and Y position and also this score uh, that we are going to assign to a particle. So the first thing we do is we randomly distribute a hundred of these imaginary points called particles in the viewable area of the Wemo. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn the beacon on and sample the data. So we're going to turn the beacon on and then read out data from the Wemo. So now what I've drawn here is I've got these circles, the bigger circles, this one, this one, and this one, represent uh, infrared uh, information, uh, infrared points that the Wemo has seen and is transmitting back. So these two points right here, these kind of orange points, represent uh, noise information, whereas this uh, kind of red point, or purplish red point, represents the signal from the actual beacon. So the big thing we have to do is we have to figure out a way to tell that this is the beacon and that these two points are just noise and we should just ignore them. So we turn on the beacon and we sample the data. So this is the data that we sample. The next thing that we do is we are going to sum up the distances for each IR blob that we have found to every single particle. And then that is going to make up what the particle score is. So now, as you can see, I've got six of my imaginary particles here. And, you know, in actuality, there's going to be 100 particles in the screen. And the particle score for this part of the uh, iteration is going to be the distance to the first IR blob plus the distance to the second IR blob plus the distance to the third IR blob. So we're just going to sum up each of those distances. So we have to calculate this 100 times. A uh, hundred times, uh, and in this situation, because we have three blobs, we would have to calculate that distance 300 times and then sum that all together for each particle. That becomes the particle score. So then we record that score, and then we move on. The next thing we do is we're going to turn the beacon off and sample data again. So I've turned the beacon off. So now that uh, purplish red point is no longer in my viewable area but those two points of interference are still in my area. So I've turned the beacon off and I've sampled the data, and now I'm basically going to do the same thing where I'm going to recompute my particle score as being the old particle score that I had computed, but now instead of adding the distance, I'm going to subtract out D1 and D2. So notice, these, this D1 and D2 is going to be approximately the same distance that we had computed uh, back in the, uh, in the first iteration of the particle filter when the beacon was still on. So the beacon was still on, I added D1 and D2, now I am subtracting out D1 and D2. So if these two IR blobs didn't move all that much, I should, be, I should have added D1 and D2 and then I subtracted out, and the particle score that I will be left with is just the distance of each particle to my infrared beacon. So now, basically what I do, because that particle score is going to be the distance to my infrared beacon, I want to identify the 40 particles, or I could have done uh, a different number of particles, uh, 40 seems to, to work the best with this, uh, with this uh, filter, I identify the 40 particles with the 40 lowest scores, because remember, that score should be a pretty good measurement of how far away that particle is from the actual beacon, from the beacon I want. 
So I identify the 40 particles with the 40 lowest scores. And I'm going to say that I'm going to keep these particles for the next iteration of the filter. So in my graphic over here, I've selected these two particles. These two particles are my good particles. They're better than these other particles that are uh, shown in red. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these two particles in the next iteration. So then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the other particles, the 60 other particles that I did not want to keep, kind of the 60 worst particles, and I'm going to regenerate those particles closer to the good particles. So I've gone from having these red particles out here, and I'm going to regenerate them uh, with a normal distribution around those good particles. So if you can see, my particles are all gravitating towards my infrared beacon. Then what I do to get essentially the position of the beacon, I keep repeating this algorithm over and over and over, and then the way I get the position of my beacon is I just average together the x and y position of all of these particles. And that is able to provide a pretty good measurement of where my beacon is in the viewable area of the Wii mode. So now what I'd like to do is I'd just like to play a short video of this working. So these green, you're, in this video you're going to see green and red dots that represent green and red particles. Uh, this dot right here, this kind of tan, uh, pinkish tan colored dot, represents the average position of each of the particles. So that at, when you, you know that the particle filter is functioning well, when all of the particles tend to gravitate towards the beacon, and this pinkish dot kind of ends up right on top of the beacon. So let me go ahead and play this. So there you can see, and maybe I'll start this over again. Yeah, I'm going to start the video over again. So you can see the beacon comes into the screen, and you can see that the particles that are closest to the beacon are kind of right on top of that beacon, and they're shown in green, and the red particles that we don't want anymore are shown in red. So those red particles are going to kind of die off in the next iteration because they have the highest score, and we are trying to select uh, uh, particles with the lowest score. And you can also see I've got a uh, bit of DC interference that is shown over here, and the video is starting over again. So the particle filter locks onto the beacon, and in a second I'll have my DC interference, and you can see that the particle filter is very good at just ignoring that uh, DC interference. Um, so anyway, that is, I guess, uh, pretty much it. Um, please, uh, you know, uh, if you have any questions about the algorithm, please feel free to leave comments in the video, or uh, please shoot me an email at c.mark.halberstadt at temple.edu. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.